Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, yet nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Well, I would think so. Why? We're created in his class. We're created in his image. We're created in his likeness. We're created in his kind. We're in the same spiritual class as God. We're spirit beings with a free will. Hello. So we're what we are better than the fowls of the air. Wish I had a shotgun this morning on the way over to Winston. Looked in the field. There were four wild turkeys sitting out there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yep. Could have had an early Thanksgiving. Four of us could have had early Thanksgiving. Could have bought a church. Everybody could have had some turkey. Hallelujah. Which of you, by taking thought, my wife's favorite scripture, can add one cubit unto his stature? Y'all have heard the story, haven't you? Jane's in the cabinet trying to reach up there and grab something. And doggone it, I'm so tired of being short. Her phone buzzed with a daily Bible text verse. And it said, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to your height? The Lord has a sense of humor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He knew on that day, at that time, she was going to say that. And so he had her Bible verse come in with this verse. Hallelujah. True story. And she's drunk about it. She's drunk. She has shrunk about a half an inch since then. Moving right along with the Bible. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? And here's, here's what happens when you don't trust God in these areas. O ye of little faith. Where, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, let me say this. The Gentiles here is used in reference to the fact of non-covenant people. He's talking to Jews, which are the covenant people. And he's saying the non-covenant people are talk, looking for food, looking for raiment, looking for, um, you know, drink, looking for all those things. The non-covenant people seek after these things. But don't you, don't you think about it. Why? We're in covenant with the Father who provides, who cares, who protects, who watches over us. Amen? Hallelujah. After all these things do the Gentiles seek, your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of all these things. How many have been, how many have been or are in a tough place? Have been or, or in one? Financially. God did not get caught off guard. He didn't get up off the phone one morning, pick up the morning newspaper, and it said, Bonnie Woods in a tough place. And him look over at Jesus and say, oh my, me, what am I going to do? Said, I said, oh my, my God, oh my, oh my, me. What am I going to do? Bonnie's in trouble. Jesus! How much left on the pavement on the pearly gates? Holy Ghost, go down to the bank and see if you can hock the pearly gates and get some money from Bonnie. We're in trouble. We didn't, it totally caught off guard. Didn't happen, did it? No. God knew what you had needed before you asked. God knows what's coming down the road before it ever gets here. Why did you let it happen? He's already made provision. It is the life of faith that gets that into our hands. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. So, if your father knows you have need of those things, what, what's the implication there? <laughs> He's going to provide for them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, what? What ye shall eat, what ye shall drink, what ye shall wear, shall be added unto you. Take no thought, therefore, for tomorrow. 
For the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. How many times have we sat around and worried about the bills coming tomorrow while we're sitting here today and can enjoy the day? We're fed. We've got a roof over our head. Yeah, but tomorrow's coming. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Hello? Did G what did Jesus say? Now, I know for some of us, maybe all of us in this room, sometimes it's hard not to think about tomorrow because you know you got a $700 bill coming you don't have to pay with. You don't have money to pay with. But you know what your master said? You know what your provider said? You know what your caregiver said? You know the one that delivers you said? The one that takes protection over you? Your bread provider said? He said, don't think about it. Now, that doesn't mean if you got $500 in the bank and you got a $700 bill due tomorrow and you're 200 short, you go out and spend the five today because you're not thinking about tomorrow. Okay, I get that. But you can't, you can't sit here today with your stomach in a knot about a bill tomorrow when Jesus said, don't think about it. All right, everybody, handles Messiah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You know I'm right. Why? Because I'm quoting Jesus. Yeah. Pastor, I can't do that. This is called the walk of faith. I've had the devil come stand in my bed at night and say, what are you going to do tomorrow? You're in trouble, boy. I mean, sweat come on you. I mean, your stomach get knots. I mean, you try to lay there and go to sleep. You can't even go to sleep because the devil's in there talking about what's coming tomorrow. And he, he'll even go out three or four extra days. And you got this one due on that day. And you got this bill due on Thursday. And you got that one due on Friday. What you going to do? And you usually get there, where, where can I borrow the money? Where can I, how can I get the money? And then you go, I, I can't get the money. There's nowhere to get the money. But Jesus said, don't think about it. Why? Your father knows you have need of these things. Come on now. Your father knows you have need of these things. Jesus is telling us who our father is. Come on now. Your father knows you have need of these things. Now, do we think God is so evil and so uncaring that he knows we have need of these things and he's not going to make provision? Y'all gotten quiet on me. I thought this was a faith church. I thought this was a word of faith church. I thought it was a Holy Ghost word of faith church. But you know what? We can be, we can be just like the first church of the frozen chosen. and let them things slip and become all tangled up in our own abilities to get something done. But Jesus said, everybody say, Jesus said, take no, therefore, take therefore. What's the old saying? If you see the word therefore, check out and find what it's there for. What's it there for? Well, back up a little bit. Verse 32. For your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of these things. <laughs> Praise God. Daddy knows that coming in on Monday, there's a bill that you don't have the money to pay. But Jesus said, take no thought. Why? Because Daddy knows. Are you, are you getting the connection? He's saying, Daddy knows you have need of these. And then he goes down and skips one verse because he says, seek the, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. These things be added unto you. Take no thought for the morrow. Well, why can I take no thought for the morrow? Because Daddy knows. And then we find out from the writings of Paul, there has no temptation taking you, but such as common to man, but he will with the temptation make a means of escape. Then we find out from the writings of Paul that he, he, he meets your need exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or even think. Hallelujah. He makes provision before the, before the problem. Why? Because daddy knows. Everybody say daddy knows. Why are you saying daddy? Because the Bible says, you know, with the spirit of God has been sent to our heart, whereby we call, cry Abba, Father. The word Abba, the best translation they can come up with it is daddy. Why? It's not the father. It's not the authoritarian. It's not the disciplinarian. It's not the one who judges. It's not. No, the, the Abba part is the caregiver, the provider, the deliverer, the daddy part. Amen. And daddy knows. Daddy knows you have the need. 
He, Jesus says, don't even think about tomorrow. Just enjoy today. Hello? We've gone with our kids' places, you know, and, and things have been tight and whatever, but we're, at the, you know, we, we had season passes at Dollywood, and we, we scrape, we, sometimes we just have to scrape up some money. And we drive over knowing that, you know, things are tight, things are tough, and, uh, but the kids are having a blast. And we don't tell them, you know, we've got a bill coming tomorrow. Oh, my God, we, just, just, we can't even enjoy today. Go ahead and enjoy today. Because tomorrow, you know what? Tomorrow never gets here. Because when tomorrow gets here, it's today. And we're living in the present of God knows. I believe if we'll get back to trusting the fact that God knows and not worrying about tomorrow, but in seeking his kingdom and his righteousness, he'll add these things unto us. And then when the, when the bill does show up, daddy knows. My, my Lord, my provider, my caregiver knows what I have need of. Oh, it can, it can get tough. You can, we, can, we can try to figure out how to rob. Remember the old, saying, the old country saying, rob Peter to pay Paul? Yeah. Now, what I want to know is why you were in debt to Paul in the first place and how you knew Peter had some money. It, it just, some of the old country says you just wonder where they came from. You know what I'm saying? All right. He says, sufficient unto the day is the evil there. We, we can just deal with the day. Live by faith today. Think on the Lord today. Have fellowship with God today. Not worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Are you here? Stop thinking about what's coming tomorrow on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And get back just to seeking God. Because daddy knows. Daddy knows. Come on. Say it. Daddy knows. What does he know? You have need of these things. You have need of these things. You have what he knows you have need of these things. So where you he wants you just to seek after him. Seek after his kingdom. Seek after his righteousness. So he can add those things to you. And don't even worry about tomorrow. I know, just live today. Live in the present. Too often times we want to live in the past of the failures. But the other times worry is, is, is really living in the future. Of what you don't have. We need to stop worrying what that, what's not coming tomorrow. What you don't think is coming tomorrow. You need to stop living in the defeat of the past. And stop living in the fear of tomorrow. And live in the kingdom of today. In the presence of God today. Can you say amen? You see. Colossians 1.13 says, he's delivered us from the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Kingdom, we know this comes from the two words, king's domain. We live in God's kingdom. That was it. He reigns over that kingdom. Now, God is not Louis the Fourteenth and Marie Antoinette. I believe, has they had the right king? Is it the 14th or 15th? Who knows the history? 14th? Okay. Marie Antoinette and Louis XIV, they, they lived in the Versailles Palace, they lived lasciviously, and the people were starving in the streets, and they would give them rotten food. And, and, and there in Paris, or in Paris, at the Place de la Concorde, the Place of, Re of Reconciliation, that's what they call it now, it's where they beheaded Marie Antoinette. Because the people got them, went out to Versailles and got them, and brought them back and cut her head off. Because she didn't care about the people. I mean, these, these were just sorry people. That's not God's kingdom. I said God doesn't, doesn't exist in a kingdom where he doesn't care about his people. He loves his children. He loves his people. He created them in the beginning. And, and then sent his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. To what? To breach. To repair the breach between his original intent and what had happened in Adam's fall. And he comes to us now and says, your father knows what you have need of. Everybody just say it. My father knows what I have need of. And my father makes provision. He even tells me, don't worry about tomorrow. Why does he say that? Come on, what's the answer? He loves you. And he knows... He knows what you have need of. Now the Bible says that if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more shall the Father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? 
Now the implication here is not only that he'll give us the Holy Ghost, but also that if we know how to give good gifts unto our children, take care of our kids, how much more is the Father going to take care of us? He's given us all things that pertain to life, uh, God, life and godliness. God loves you. God loves me. Amen? He made, him, he made Jesus sin for us and knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He meets our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is our caregiver. God watches over us. God delivers us. God protects us. God knows what we have need of. And because he knows what we have need of, he's already made provision for the answer before you get to the place. That's why he says don't worry about tomorrow because he's already got provision for tomorrow. Amen. I can't, but I don't know how he's going to do it. Now listen. You're going to have to get back to being children in faith. Life experience tries to teach you that God doesn't do things. But I remember when you were a kid. If daddy said he was bringing you an RC cola and a moon pie home after work, you were looking for that thing, to drive, that, that vehicle, whatever he was driving, truck, car, work truck, work van. When he drove up in the yard, what you were expecting him to get out with? An RC cola and a moon pie. Why? Because daddy said he was bringing, he was going to provide that for you. You know, you, you, you just knew. I mean, you were waiting at that window, looking out that window, waiting for daddy to drive up because he was going to come with an RC and a moon pie. Or some folk a grape soda. A knee high grape. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, I remember when they first came. I remember when sixteen ounce drinks first came out. Oh my gosh, sixteen ounce glass bottle drinks. I mean, they went from ten to sixteen. Well, actually, when they started at six and a half for the cokes to eight to ten to twelve and then to sixteen. Whew. Made with real cane sugar. That's right. Hallelujah. I remember getting sixteen ounce RC colas and a double decker moon pie. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, that's a, had a man tell me at the backfield one day, he said, get you, a, get you a moon pie and eat it, and then drink an RC cola behind it. That, mar that stuff will swell up in your stomach. You won't be hungry the rest of the day. It didn't work for me. I still got it and did that way, but then I ordered a Stewart sandwich, ha hamburger, and a quart of chocolate milk, and two honey buns, and but you, when, 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 when you knew that daddy was going to bring, bring you, you, he said, I'm bringing you that home today, you were looking for daddy to drive up. There was no doubt in your mind as that child that daddy was going to show up. You, you knew for sure daddy was coming with RC cola and a moon pie. You done told my daddy said he's going to bring me RC and a moon pie today. And he said, there's daddy's, hear daddy's truck, here you come. Because as a child, you're so trusting. And believe so much that what your daddy said is going to do. Yeah. Amen. But then we get older and we have life experiences. Things happen. Things don't go the way we want them to go. And we start distrusting. And we'll even begin to distrust God. When he said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't think about tomorrow. Don't even, he said, don't even take a thought. I mean, you don't have time to worry. If you can't take a thought, you can't worry at all. Take no thought for tomorrow. Think about that. But Jesus said that within the context of understanding your father knows you have need of those things. Can somebody say glory? glory. It's good to be in the family of God. Amen. It's good to be a child of God. It's good to know that our father cares for us. What did the Bible say? Take no thought for the morrow. For, I mean, say, uh, be anxious. And nothing be anxious. Nothing be, uh, be careful. Be careful for nothing. Amen. Isn't that right? Why, why, why can we be careful of nothing? Because your father cares for you. He says he careth for you. And nothing be careful or anxious for your father cares for you. God cares for you. Say, God cares for me. Cares for Say it again. Say, God cares for me. Cares for me. Hallelujah. If God cares for you, then, and he's your provider, and he's your, he's, his character, his nature is provided for you, then you can just forget about tomorrow. Sitting down, eating meal today, sitting down at the table, eating a good meal today and worried about what you're going to have to eat tomorrow because you, you know that you don't have any money for tomorrow. That's a devil robbing you of your blessing. You could be enjoying that meal. Now, today we're going home.
I went bought the pork chops yesterday. Hallelujah. We're going to have fried pork chop, some mashed potatoes and gravy. Hallelujah. I made, I made cabbage on Friday. I boiled cabbage down with, with, with uh, neck, uh, smoked neck bones in the pot, got all the grease out of them, all the flavor out, and boiled the cabbage down, got them all. I, so boy, I like boiled cabbage better than stew fried. I like them when you chop them up. They're, you know, and, uh, and Jane's going to make some home milk, homemade buttermilk lard biscuits. And some... <laughs> Don't take that father like one of the pastor thing too far. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. And some uh, macaroni and cheese. Anybody say glory yet? Can anybody say itabababababa? Now here we are. Going to sit down at the table. Going to have all the family of the kids, the boyfriend, the attachment, the son-in-law now. <laughs> A.K.A. the attachment. And we're sitting down eating. And somebody gonna be going. Somebody go. What are we gonna eat tomorrow? Because we don't have enough money to buy food for tomorrow. I don't care what we eat tomorrow. Right now, I'm eating pork chops with some biscuits dipped in grandma's molasses. Anybody like molasses? Get some old grandma's molasses. You know, low sulfur. Pour it on the plate. Take your biscuit and just dip it right on in there. Or we used to stick your finger down there and just and just pour it right in the middle. Does that sound good, Melanie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you don't like that? Oh, just take, pour molasses right down and just eat it. Oh, uh, an Oklahoman. Anyway, it's an Oki. Yeah. But you're sitting there with that meal in front of you, and all you can think about is what you're not going to be able to get tomorrow. Wait a second now. Kids, don't worry about tomorrow. We know what you have need of. Tomorrow we'll get here, we'll have something to eat. What you going to have? I don't know yet. Might be, it might be T-bone steaks on the grill. Hallelujah. All right. Could be hamburgers from Sam's. Let me say this. Don't be so caught up with what you don't think you have coming tomorrow. You can't enjoy today. We're to live, we're to live with God in the present. We are, and that pattern establishes a routine for the future. We're trusting God. My father knows I have need. I will not have lack. I will not have slack. I will always have provision because my father knoweth. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? amen. Would y'all get anything out of this? Amen. Two of you got something out of this? How about the rest of you? Sure. All right. Praise the Lord. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.